Naked Jacob is a YouTuber who mainly dabbles in signature hyper chaotic video essays. But before he ever even started a channel, he was a passionate musician first and foremost. There's a chance you'd probably know this if you've seen any of his videos before. Fuck. He'll just be talking about the tiniest, idiest, bittiest element of a game you've never realized had as much of an impact on you as it did, then he'll just, out of nowhere, send blessings down from the heavens onto you with some styling jams. Beer. This is the same man who just released my favorite album of the whole year. I gotta admit, calling Romcom my album of the year is a bit of a bold statement you should take with a grain of salt that's so large it's actually just a bowl of rice. I've only listened to like seven albums in my entire life, five of them this year, but my point is Romcom left a really big impact on me after I listened to it and I think it's an incredibly amazing unique project which stands its own ground even if you've never heard of Jakey before. Cool boys. This is Jakey's first album, one he's been working on for quite a bit, uh, I forgot how long it was. It was... Since 2016. Oh, okay, thank you, Jakey. So it took a while to get made, which usually that's an indicator of something good. You know, unless your name is a lot of things that have existed. In this case, I didn't know fully what to expect before going in. I was a fan of his before, but this is on a completely different level entirely. First, I want to start out with the record's tagline, that it's based on a true story. It tells a conceptual, although loose, story through Jakey's life, with lyrics focusing on depression, anxiety, heartbreak, online identity, success, imposter syndrome, perfection, it's generally some heavy emotional topics. While listening, you might have been distracted from this emotional weight due to the banger instrumentals with the squeakiest, cleanest production I've heard in a while and a diverse assortment of samples in mixture with hella catchy beats. Like the one on the album opener. Oh, gotta catch your breath. Like the one on the album opener, Drive Off a Bridge. A track that commands your attention from its opening seconds with an out of this world driving beat which is an amazing pun that you should laugh at right now. The beat elegantly samples the Gran Turismo count and also samples strings from Shadows of the Colossus. It's one shadow. Get that right. There's only one shadow and he's a hedgehog. That's why it's called Shadow of the Colossus. His vocals are harsh and raw which adds quite a lot to convey the complex emotion this track offers. Taken both like a suicide note and a pump up anthem at the same time. It talks about Jakey wanting to die in a high speed car crash with a list of messages for his loved ones after his death. What a bummer. While the second verse and the rest of the song is way more upbeat in tone because by the end, Jakey's got a girl named Lexi, keeping my brain real healthy, keeping me cool. Which is cool. Except Jakey's lying here, he didn't get a girl named Lexi, he got a girl named Lexa Pro. Now isn't she a beauty? And then the track teases the next song on the album before it's even over. That's so awesome. Oh wow. Like. Like Totally Freak Me Out gets the award for the longest song title on a Jakey album in 2022. And also the award for slowly becoming my favorite out of how fun it is. Congratulations, you won! I love the warbling synths and discordant double track vocals singing in the chorus, the strings that go yeah, close enough. The strings are another great shot of the Colossus sample, and all of this really feels like a continuation of Drive Off a Bridge, making two parts of one song. Over a skittering beat, he ebbs and flows through his successes in life and on his anxiety with the increasingly dangerous world we live in. Somehow, he goes so well from mentioning his anxiety of a public shooting to making it seem like it's cool that he does taxes. It just goes hard. Why do I sound so congested all of a sudden? I listen to it every day, sort of like the song. Track 3, as it was actually once titled before the album's track order got completely changed up, is titled Every Day. It's a sentimental reflection on a relationship that has to end. It's something a bit more low-key. Yeah, yeah. yuh. Something with two great vocal samples. Yeah, yeah. The, why am I doing yeah, yeah this? The bouncy digital bass alongside incredible bombastic ramp up with the choir sample is elating. Then you get the best transition on the whole album. Yeah, yeah. Think about each other like... Survival Horror is named as such because it's clearly about the fun time that was the pandemic and is also the song most directly about his YouTube career. If I had to guess, the title is most likely in direct reference to the Resident Evil series because those games are really, really infested with viruses. 
Mental health can often feel like fighting for survival against the nightmare in your head, so referencing that to video games makes a lot of sense, because Jakey definitely knows quite a lot about video games. This song has the corniest sample I've ever heard, but it takes that corniness and flips it on its head, and then does a backflip onto a skateboard doing a sick-ass kickflip oh on the first try. It's a really fun track outside of the darker lyrics, and has this punchy drum machine backing them throughout. He even incorporates the sample I was talking about, which is a literal Vine meme, into the freaking chorus, creating one of the most definitive lyrical moments on the album. He raps about his online identity, stressing over YouTube analytics, dropping it even the slightest amount, accidentally turning the numbers on screen into a self-worth determinator. He connects addiction to this success to a toxic relationship. The track also has some direct references to the pandemic, a very fun time, as we all know. The last 15 seconds is actually a direct sample lifted from Jakey's video on online dating, a video that came out in December 2019, where he said 2019 sucked and he was gonna have a better time in 2020. Oh boy! Try and stop me, you won't. Oh, and he was moving to New York? Oh no, oh no, the stars did not align for poor naked Jacoby. Also in 2020, I need to mention this, Jakey drank a smoothie. It's time for smoothies. Okay then. Oh, it's smoothie time. That was really important. Personally, this is a close favorite on the album for me. Maybe even a three-way tie between this, like totally freaked me out, and it don't matter where you go when I Pine Barrens feels like the centerpiece of the whole record, partially due to it being the lead single, but mainly for its cinematic tone. It's a melancholic song with layers of introspective visuals. Depending on your perspective, it could be about an ex-relationship, or it could be about realizing he's failed to take care of himself. For the literal meaning of the song, it's him describing a cold death by execution over a grave in a forest. However, this doesn't usually happen to somebody, so it's probably a metaphor. Throughout this, he speaks of searching for someone he's yet to find. You could interpret it as him struggling with a vicious breakup, or alternatively, searching to find a version of himself that he likes. He asks questions to this ideal version to see what it would change about him currently, if he's even worth becoming this better identity. And it climbs to the emotional cores where he grapples with his uncertain self-worth. Maybe this is what I get for leaving you out in the cold. Jack my body to the woods and let me go. I think viewing the album through a lens of Jakey speaking introspectively is the intent of most songs, but his song structure lends to more freedom with your interpretation. Also, shout out to the new verse that wasn't on the single version. I was really happy when I heard it. Naked Jackson did so well with the lyricism on this project. Good job, Naked Jacqueline. You're a genius. Rebox or the Nike follows this trend of intriguing lyrics that could mean multiple things. I believe this song is either about how he can't decide between Rebox or Nike shoes at the store, or it could be about how he likes Adidas. Another possible meaning is that it's about Jakey's struggle in producing this very album. His desire to make tracks as good as possible while working alone ran down so much of his time and energy, creating a heavy pressure on himself that he couldn't ignore, giving him a misplaced need to be a perfectionist. Enforcing an unfortunate drive to make the right impression on others when they hear his tracks, something that hijacks his mind and caused sleepless nights of working over the course of six or even more years, but eventually he came to terms with the work he produced and acknowledged he has to let go of those worries and tribulations over his song so that he can release the bangers he's passionate about to the world. I don't really think that's the meaning though, I'm pretty sure it's him talking about Adidas. The sample on Rebox goes crazy, if you can't tell, Jakey's a bit of a master at sampling. Game soundtracks are persistent, he inserts lots of thematically relevant film clips, he's been a frequenter of using classic 80s pop songs, and he's capable of uniting silly memes besides serious lyrics. I mentioned the meme sample in Survival Horror, but that chanting you hear in Drive Off a Bridge? It's from a weird sorority cult induction video, but the way it's put in convinces my ears that they're singing the chorus alongside him. It's such a smart placement that I can't get over it, nor can I get over its reincorporation later on the album, which I'll get to in a bit. We aren't there yet. Don't you, don't you dare rush me. Back to the lyrics, it's crazy he's been working on this album for so long. Reebok specifically has been teased several times since 2016. I figured I could just preview some music for you guys, so here we go, you know? Oh. 
Dyke, you son of a bitch! Thought it wasn't smoothie time anymore? What do you think this is? What do no, you think not the smoothie time! With this level of quality, it's no wonder he took as long as he did. Now, I could just be misinterpreting the meaning of everything on here. I tend to do that a lot. I mean, at first, I thought the whole album was just about how much he likes the rom com You've Got Mail, which is certainly what Tommy Hanks is about. I do know that. It's a pretty sounding song that takes you back to the sentimental side of things with a nice piano melody, yeah, yeah, and a constant flow of romantic comedy movie references, yeah, yeah, making it the closest thing this album has to a title track. It's a rom com reference extravaganza, yeah, yeah. I appreciate being able to understand the references on this penultimate track thanks to watching Nakey Jack videos. His video about online dating references the movie You've, You've Got, Got Mail, Mail, which I have not seen and will never see, but thanks to him, I now know that Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks are in You've, You've Got, Got Mail, Mail, and Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks are in Tommy Hanks. Wow, what a surprise. I'm so glad you guys get the reference after I brought it up 15 times already. And Meg Ryan in You Got Mail wears these pants. these pants. I know this because of Jakey, just like I know we could get away. Be my Meg Ryan and I'll be your Tommy Hanks. Yeah, it's also a really catchy song with a wide range of references like the You've Got Mail connection. Not just on this track, but on the entire album. He indirectly mentions his channel and his fans a lot. Area codes in South Dakota and New York, where he grew up and where he currently lives, are a recurring motif of the album, and I can't imagine the inspiration for the imagery in Pine Barrens comes from anywhere but good old cold South Dakota. Wait, what do you mean it's a Sopranos reference? That isn't a rom-com, what a trash album. The next and final track is, in my opinion, the most deeply complex and personal off the album. Ah, look at his giant head. Fathead's instrumental is a lot darker than the other songs and it reflects on Jakey's childhood and depression affecting his outlook on life as he's grown up. His slightly distorted vocals are a big whammy punch every time you start up the song. It's basically a recap of all his highs, lows, and everything else that happened on this album in his life. Some lines here, when put up against earlier ones, create clear comparisons. Fathead has my favorite samples on here. The ones that play here are more cleverly subtle than the rest of the album. In the lyrics, he feels like he needs to change, like he's becoming a person he doesn't want to be. So he takes initiative action to either change or go back to that bridge. This shows the looping stages of his depression, going back to the very first song on the album with chants and chorus of Drive Off a Bridge returning. Tying back into the first song, it shows the looping stages of his depression. Throughout the album, Jakey shows signs of trying to improve himself and committing to self-growth. But by the end, it all came tumbling down. The cycle continues, and Jakey's suicidal plans of driving off a bridge return. Jacob, beat it. This is my territory. Fathead. Rom-com feels like a genuine extension of who Jakey is at his core. Through his YouTube videos, music, personal life, he's funny, serious, dramatic, and thrusts you into some deeply personal, flawed, and uncomfortable places in all of them. But nothing displays it more than this record. He shoved his heart and soul into this, which he should consider cut putting back, because you can't live long without those. I'm really happy Jakey was able to finish this. The delays for it were, at first, unfortunate, but in the end, very fortunate, since he made such an incredible album. I'm really wondering who Jakey thinks he is, though because he can't just keep releasing music with stupid meme samples in it and make me almost cry to it like he like uh 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 i know this isn't an album that'll resonate with everyone as much as it has with me but i was not expecting how much i would love this part of it could be that i've been following jakey for so long but i think the album absolutely stands on its own rom-com takes you to so many emotionally charged places like that one part in drive off a bridge where he talks about microsoft bimbo's eight so tear-jerking. It's a really unique project that shows off Jakey's personality, and I think that makes it kind of beautiful. So while I haven't done this album the justice I feel it deserves, I hope you at least understand why I'm passionate about it. It's because I like the shade of red the cover is. Just look at it. I mean, it looks... Uh, ah, sorry. I tend to black out whenever I see anything cool, my bad. I'm glad more appears to be on the horizon for Jakey. His music doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm really glad this album is out there and us hot boys and gamer girls can enjoy it because Rom-Com is such an individual record that couldn't have been made by anybody else. I really hope he doesn't take quite as long to make something else though, but if it has to take a while, then I'll be fine waiting. So we've gone over the entire album, but what do I actually think about it? The only thing that matters after all is the rating. In this case, it's a just kidding. I don't.
I don't even care to rate this, okay? It doesn't, I disqualified out of 10. Jakey, Jakey, Jakey made a big mistakey because how can I give it anything when the peak of human music is this Daft Punk and Crazy Frog mashup? I mean, any further attempts at creating good music are just worthless. Okay, bye guys. Catch me within the next week or six months where I'll either talk about Sonic or die. One's bound to happen soon. Oh my God, Becky, look at that. Got a head full of dreams and a heart full of love But I never made the money so nobody gave a fuck Friday night, what you wanna do? Solo, halo, to sacrifice No more Xbox Live in the room, I'm alright